So we have to obsess about opportunities to secure our data and our customers' data in entirely new and creative ways on an ongoing basis. And we know that at the same time, the bad guys are also thinking about how can we attack these key systems and get hold of important information. Today, I'm joined by Guyan Benedict, the Chief Technology Officer of Salesforce Australia and New Zealand. Guyan joins us from a prestigious background, being the CIO of the Reserve Bank of Australia, holding senior roles at Westpac, and he's also a lifelong learner. He's an industry fellow of both the MIT and UTS. Welcome, Guyan. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Deandre. Looking forward to the conversation. Well, look, Guyan, I mentioned in the intro there, you've been the CIO of the Reserve Bank. Can you help us explain what does that role entail? Yes, look, it was a fun and challenging role. Uh, at the RBA, Reserve Bank of Australia, it's accountable for interest rates. Everyone knows it for that. But importantly, it also looks after national payment infrastructure, federal government banking, financial market operations. So All the simple stuff. Yeah, <laughs> every day there's billions of dollars of value. <laughs> wow. and, and if things go down, systems go down, which I was accountable for, um, it would be in the front page of the news and, and pretty catastrophic for the country. So there's a lot of accountability around keeping systems up and running, mm. keeping them very secure, but also changing those systems and keeping them modern and up to date. And so you've got this constant balance of keeping things mm. stable, but at the same time innovating. Uh, and so I loved it. Achieved a lot over that period. And I think, you know, the country's really served well by the technology that we've put in place. So fast forward, your CTO of Salesforce Australia New Zealand, uh, you're out there meeting our customers. Tell us a little bit about the role and how that interacts with our community. Salesforce's focus is very much around the customer and how organizations engage and deliver fantastic experiences to the customer. Customers have an ever growing set of demands around what they expect from the organizations they work with. They also require reliability and they require predictability, mm -hmm. but they also want innovation. I think right now in industry, there's a big focus on AI and AI is really disrupting not just technology, but also the way everyone operates and businesses and broader society. So it's a really exciting stage to be working with customers and organizations as they think about how is AI gonna transform what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's fantastic being with Salesforce, it really, I think, has its focus on understanding how do you fundamentally disrupt the way we do things and improve the way we do things, but doing so in a way which is mindful of the importance of trust. Now we're dealing with AI and agents, right? And so we're seeing a lot of the potential for AI service agents to help humans. How are you seeing that come to, to bear? Is there any examples that you can share that you've been discussing with our customers? I think uh, AI has been in use in organizations for decades. You know, predictive uh, and machine learning is, is a pretty well-known quantity. Obviously, more recently, we're now looking at generative AI yes. and even beyond that to agentive AI. And so what we're talking about now is actually handing over more responsibility to AI itself. Mm. And so we've had chatbots, chatbots are getting smarter, they're able to take more responsibility and look after more complex tasks, which aren't just in a second, but may go over a day or a week. And we're putting a lot of time working with our customers to say, how do we put these more sophisticated chatbots and AI capabilities into how they interact with their customers? Can you help unpack a little bit of the traditional chatbot that's probably more based on, you know, predictive AI versus gen AI and this newer breed of agents? Sure. I think, you know, the initial chatbots we're all probably familiar with uh, and which are quite common in industry are the ones which are very good at answering pretty predictable questions. When so, are you open? That's right. Yeah. You know, they can be trained on that information. And this is a common question you're going to get. And this is a, a good answer to that question. The more recent generative AI chatbots go a step further. They're able to create new information. Uh, obviously, they have to be informed by important grounded enterprise type um, data. If it's not, the danger is that information may be false or inaccurate. That's and happened. So, absolutely. <laughs> it's happened a lot. I think early experience of generative AI has made everyone realize the importance of having trusted data inform how ch generative AI actually engages with your customers to make sure it's accurate and reliable. And so a big focus around generative AI is listening to questions, perhaps without having been trained on answer that question, they're still capable of coming up with a, a good response and still providing a lot of support to a customer or even a, a staff member of your organization who's looking for some guidance. Um, but they focus on generating content in the moment, um, very much in response to a question that may have been asked or a task that's been assigned to them. Where we're going with the next generation of agentive AI is actually giving more autonomy 
to those agents. Not only are those AI agents able to generate content, they're able to actually take that content and interact with a far more complex set of processes and, and challenges within an organization. It can go and check up your policies. It can be aware of your rules and, and the conditions that you engage with the customer. It may be familiar with previous interactions that that customer is uh, engaged with even a couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago. And it can take a more long-lived Mm, challenge like a multi-day or absolutely you can say you know what i'll sort this out I'll, it might take me two or three days and i will come back to you when i have a resolution that's certainly something that's not possible with current generative ai agents but certainly is now something we're seeing with the emergence of agentive ai agents which have that generative ai capability coupled with autonomy and the ability to actually see things through to a conclusion and if you think about that that the power of scalability that gives an organization is immense i think this concept of us as individuals in our organizations being able to delegate tasks to ai for it to basically see those things to a conclusion um, it's a huge source of productivity for us gets rid of a lot of those annoying tasks and functions so we can focus on what's really important and i think the same will go for customers ability for individuals to actually delegate to AI to do some of those administrative tasks, maybe wait uh, on hold, uh, yeah, say them doing hour, it, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, or, you know, do some of those tasks like, you know, renew my driver's license and things like that, which maybe aren't time critical, but just require a little bit of follow through and persistence. Yes. That's the sort of um, productivity and the, and the, so I think the sort of disruption that we're about to see as agentive AI emerges. Yeah. As I think for that, and I was thinking about this the other day, for myself personally, if you give access to a technology like that, so say like renew a driver's license, let's take that example, you may need to provide some ID, you might need to give some personal information. So my, immediately my brain being you know, someone that learned you know, computer science back in the day was mm. the security and trust implications there. So I know that you've been thinking about that a lot. How do you think we should think about it? What are customers saying and what's the Salesforce position? Sure. I think generative AI is a very powerful tool and certainly agentive AI even more powerful than that. Um, when a tool is that powerful, it can be used for you know, many sometimes unanticipated um, reasons, good and bad. I think in security, it's a perfect example of agentive AI as a game changer for how security unfolds as both a challenge and, uh, and a response. Mm. Um, I think it's also important to maybe step back when we look at security. I, I was accountable for security and cyber operations at the central bank for almost a decade. And one thing that was impressed on me in the security context is it's contested. And what that means is, you know, you've got your job and your life and your objectives, but there are an opposing group of individuals and organizations who actually want you to fail in order for themselves to succeed. So it's, it's a, actually a space where simply sitting back and not doing anything creates an opportunity for others who, who want to perhaps take advantage of you being complacent to actually perhaps get access to benefits yes. um, that yes. work against you. So in the security space, with the emergence of a really um, powerful AI capabilities, it's good and bad. On the good side, Security teams typically overstretch, never have enough people, always have a, you know, an infinite amount of work that they need to do. AI gives them scalability and productivity, which allows them to do more with limited resources. The problem is the same capabilities are also presented to the bad guys, the adversaries. <laughs> and they're also thinking creatively around how can we use A this? A whole new to, world for them. Yeah. <laughs> how can we personalize our attacks? How can we conduct more attacks? Uh, how can we... Uh, come up with really complex, sophisticated attacks, which we couldn't do. As a cybersecurity defense team, and certainly Salesforce puts a big emphasis on this, we have to protect our customers' data at all costs. Trust is our number one of value. So we have to obsess about opportunities to secure our data and our customers' data in entirely new and creative ways on, a, on an ongoing basis. And we know that at the same time, the bad guys are also thinking about how can we attack these key systems and get hold of important information. So it's an arms race and the, the cultural focus that we have with trust as our number one value ensures that we put a lot of research into this space, we're very proactive, we have uh, red lines that we won't cross and these are the uh, measures and the practices we encourage our customers to adopt in order to stay on the right side of the security challenge when it comes to generative AI. 
Well, I feel better that we have folks as smart as yourself and teams that are thinking about that all day long because I think the subtle part of that is the, the trust element, right? But trust is a little different. How do we think about that and how can customers deliver trust at AI? Without trust, everything else actually starts to fall down. You know, our financial sector, how we work with government, how we exchange information with people that perhaps we don't know. We rely on trust of the system and the processes that we have in place to make sure that we're not going to come out worse for yes. dealing with people. Perhaps It's you know. interesting. Without that layer of trust, maybe many things couldn't happen. Yeah, and it's one of those things you can often take for granted. And it's only when it's pulled away that you realize how much you assumed was in place. One thing we know about trust is it's hard earned, but also easily lost. And so we're very mindful that earning trust is really critical, but maintaining trust, particularly for the hard-earned relationships that our customers have with their customers, um, it's really important for us to invest in that, to not breach that relationship that they have with their um, customers and consumers. Yes, yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's not dissimilar. We've thought about customer experience for the longest time and how one bad customer experience can erode all the good things you've done, whether it's in an airline situation or hospitality. So how can organizations approach this or how are you seeing organizations approach this? Yeah, it's it's a great question. I think initially when particularly some of the very disruptive generative AI capabilities came out, a number of organizations just put a pause. So I think we're beyond that now. I think the reality is it's become very apparent that the innovations we're seeing in AI are very foundational. They are going to fundamentally rewrite the way we engage with each other, with organizations and across industry. And so there's an inevitability about it. The sooner you start developing experience and knowledge, the better. Because if you don't, you're basically pausing while others, your competitors, your customers, potentially adversaries, are actually taking advantage of those same innovations. Start. Absolutely. Yeah. So we think it's important to sort of develop your experience, you know, putting your toe in the water at, at, in some cases and understanding the technology, but also understanding its implication for your organization. I think importantly too, one last piece of advice is to keep the options open. There's so much innovation and disruption in the AI space. I think the single biggest danger uh, in, in uh, is actually locking yourself into mm. an approach based on a prediction of how things are going to unfold. I think we're still very early on in the overall uh, wave of AI innovation that we're now experiencing and seeing in front of us. And so I think testing out different scenarios, building capability which will give you resilience to multiple scenarios and actually make sure that you're not going down a, a pathway that you might need to reverse from, it's probably the wisest thing that a CIO or a technology leader or a business leader can be doing right now. And it's very much why from a Salesforce perspective, we take very much an open architectural approach. We allow and anticipate a scenario where there'll be multiple AI capabilities out there, including the ones we develop Choose ourselves. your model. Choose, yeah. Bring your own data, bring your own models, and anticipate that it's going to be a complex environment and you want to have them interoperating with each other. No, I love that. Is there anything else? If we zoom out one to three years, where will we be in a few years' time? I think one thing that's going to happen, which possibly isn't been something we um, that's looked at as much, is while we have massive innovation in the AI space, we also have a lot of innovation in a number of other dimensions. Mm -hmm. You know, look at robotics, battery technology, and a whole bunch of things like that. And I think it's actually going to be the potentially unanticipated interaction of a lot of oh, these like innovations. A Absolutely. Okay. I think if you know, if you look at the at the launch of the smartphone 10, 15 years ago, no one will have fully anticipated the convergence of innovations that then allowed entirely new industries and business models to open up. I think the same thing's going to happen with AI. We've got blockchain, we've got quantum computing, certainly AI, battery technology, robotics, all of those things are going to converge at various points. And those convergences are going to create entirely new unforeseen capabilities, probably industries, let alone products. And I'm most excited about that. Well, what an exciting time to be in tech, to be a technologist. Gayan, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with all of us. I really appreciate the time and look forward to keep hearing what's coming out next. Love the conversation. Thanks, Leandro.